Hey guys, Jay at Broader Performance. Uh, I'm not going to do a long, detailed one on this, but I figured I'd do this. I, I do a lot of these valve bodies. This is an AOD, and um, I don't work on everything and anything, but to me this is uh, one of the most complicated valve bodies I work on for sure. It's not very friendly taking it apart sometimes, and... Uh, so basically this video, I just kind of want to show you this thing. And uh, I just wanted to show you, here's all the, here's all the valves that come out of it. Um, and you can see my very professional, high-tech method of laying it out on this old, dirty detail and cloth here. I know we've kind of talked about that before, but uh, this valve body, you got a lot of stuff in it. And... I kind of preach about this. If you're going to pull clips and things and have springs shooting across a room, don't even take this valve body apart because you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And some of these springs and things, you're never going to figure out which one went where. Some of them are very similar in size. So, uh, so if you're thinking about doing one of these, and uh, you definitely got to go through the valve body on this unit. Very important. A lot of valves, a lot of... Valves tend to get sticky on it and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, they can be very difficult to remove. Uh, they're real stubborn. Now, if you look at some of these end caps, uh, this has a tapped hole in there. And that's a nice feature that they did so that you can basically just take a screw and screw it in there so you can pull that cap out because... When this valve body first came out, they didn't have those. And man, it can be tough to get the caps out. Sometimes you end up having to drill and tap the cap to remove it. Uh, so it's nice when you have a later model valve body of this that has the screw holes already. Some of them still don't, but all the important ones typically do. But uh, there's just a lot of stuff in here, and it's a lot of passages, and... These tend to be real cruddy. This unit's typically pretty burnt up because the pressure is so low in them. Uh, so what happens to these is when they shift into third gear, the pressure drops. It's what they call the cutback circuit. Uh, so your pressure goes from, you know, let's say, let's say this is a high throttle run and you leave in first gear and you know you have it floored and it's making a good 200 pounds of pressure well when it makes a two three shift that pressure will drop to like a hundred pounds and especially if your tv is not properly set man you you may only be making 75 pounds or something and uh that's why you see these high gear and overdrive band burnt up a lot it's because of that pressure cutback. And the reason the factory does that is because they didn't want the unit to be running high pressure, you know, during cruise speeds. Uh, makes the pump and ceiling rings and things like that last longer. But unfortunately, they kind of got a little too carried away with the cutback, in my opinion. And it would cause these units to fail. Uh, this was the big complaint about it back in the days, and not too many, I think, maybe only one or two of the valve body modification kits that are out there for this actually remove that cutback. Uh, I always remove it when I'm building the unit. I don't, I don't use any of these valve body kits. I do my own thing these days, but I've used a couple of them years ago. Uh, but I, I do my own thing now. I've done a lot of these units, and I've done a lot of playing with these units, and I just have my own way I like to do them, and not so much to save money by not buying the kit. It's really to achieve my goals. And anyways, if you're going to do one of these yourself, and you're going to buy one of these kits, uh, see if you can get one that actually removes the cutback circuit. I think one of the ones that I used to use back in the day, I think they discontinued it, and uh, there might be one left that still does that. I don't know, but I'm not here to promote 
you know, other brand names or anything or, you know, not promote them as the case may be sometimes. But uh, removing the cutback circuit is pretty important on these. The other thing I found with this unit, a lot of these shift kits and probably most of these shift kits, they make the shifts really firm. And I know guys think that's good for the clutches, but what happens in this unit is... Like if the 1-2 shift is super hard, you know, whether you have the roller clutch or the diode style, if you've upgraded this to the diode style, these never had a diode from the factory. Uh, it oh, oh, They all had the roller clutch for the intermediate. Well, man, it just, when you have a really hard 1-2 shift, it just kind of beats up on that one-way clutch, regardless of which style it is, and you can tear it out. So I don't suggest you make it too insanely hard because this is a unit. It will shift hard, really hard, you know, with these kits and stuff in it, especially with good TV pressure and stuff. Uh, man, it'll just, it'll knock the damn back window out. They'll shift so hard sometimes. And I've backed off on that over the years. I've found that to be more of a issue than... You know, it was just causing more problems than it was solving. And the 2-3 shift can be pretty intense as well. Uh, you know, you see these kits that you buy. They'll have you block the accumulator. They'll give you like a spacer so it won't move and stuff like that. I used to hydraulically lock it out. But, man, you know, doing that on the 2-3, you have to worry about that long, skinny input shaft breaking from such a hard shift and... That's not a good scenario either. So, you know, your one, two, your two, three shift, you don't want them too insanely hard. I guess overdrive, you know, I mean, that can be pretty firm. You don't, you know, I guess it's not going to hurt much, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, but it's not a desirable shift feel. That shift in a fourth being too hard or bindy or something, it's not desirable either. But, so be careful of that and, you know, kits that have you drilling really big holes in your separator plate and uh, you really want something, in my opinion, more geared towards like street RV use, you know, unless you've got a really high stall converter and you've kind of turned this AOD into a race transmission. Well, that's a different story, you know, but if you're still running the old 12-inch converter, especially if you're still running lockup on this, man, don't make the shifts too hard, you know, if you're doing one of these kits. Um, I used to sell a lot of these valve bodies. Not so much anymore. I don't have the cores too often, so um, you still see them on my site here and there, but not like it once was. But in any case, uh, so my tips for this is Look at what you're dealing with, all the pieces, all the passages. Be organized. Don't mix things up. Don't let stuff go flying across the room. Lots and lots and lots of patience on this one. Very time-consuming. Uh, like always, uh, just make sure the valves are you know, nice and free and not hanging up and sticking in the bores and things. You know, if it is and you can't fix it, you may just have to get another valve body. And, man, getting these anymore is not all that easy. Uh, they've gotten pretty rare. Uh, but, you know, it's an old transmission now. It was discontinued, I think, in, I don't know, what was it, 92, 94, something like that. So, you know, made them, came out in 1980. Not a lot of this stuff around anymore, or at least any of it that's any good. That's getting to be an issue, too. You know, just old, worn out, rusty. They won't shift in a fourth anymore when they wear out and things like that. So uh, there's ways of dealing with all that, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this quick video here. But anyways, I just wanted to show you this apart and kind of tell you a few tips that I've learned on it. And this is a good unit when you go through this valve body and do a good job on it. Um, so, okay. So, just if you're new to these, I just wanted to show you what it looked like.
Uh, if you've seen these a bunch of times, well, you didn't need to watch this video probably. But, uh, but you know, my my best advice: do not make the shifts too super hard. Just no no real reason for it. It's not really going to save the clutch backs any. It's just going to break things. This is kind of a fragile unit, so. You know, a unit like a C6 or, you know, something of that nature. That can handle pretty firm shifts, but oh, not this unit. But they don't need to be. You don't really have all the timing issues you have in some other units, too. So, uh, okay, I'm going to stop it here. And we'll see you on the next one.